All right, so if you are planning to have corrective eye surgery, whether that be LASIK eye surgery, cataract surgery, or some other similar type procedure, then there are a few things that you're gonna wanna do first. It's important to understand that the health status of the eye, including the health of the eyelids and the health of the tear film, can all play roles in the final outcomes of these procedures, mainly because they can influence not only how the eye heals, but the accuracy in the prescription at the final result, as well as the chances of having side effects or complications, such as a very common one, which is that of worse dry eye symptoms. If you are new here to the channel, my name is Dr. Joseph Allen, and I recently just had my own eye surgery, having ICL implants put in. But in prep for that surgery, I hit the books and read the most recent research on how to optimize my eye health and ocular surface so that I would have the best chance of having the best possible outcome. So after all of my research, here is my evidence-based pre-op routine for corrective eye surgery. Step number one is to take care of your eyelids. This is done through two ways. First is to clean the eyelids twice a day. This is important because it cleans off dead skin cells, skin oils, and makeup debris from the eye, as well as microorganisms, which are known to cause irritation and inflammation of the eyelids and the glands in the eyelids, as well as causing disruption of the tear film. It's generally considered great to just clean the eyelids on a daily basis anyway, just for routine eye health maintenance, but cleaning of the eyelids twice a day has been shown in the research to be beneficial if done leading up to at least one month out from the surgery date. For myself, I usually do clean my eyelids and eyelashes at least once a day, but again, in preparation for my own surgery, I did bump that up to twice a day, starting around four to six weeks out before the surgery date. I find this most easily done using eyelid cleaning wipes. These usually contain tea tree oil, okra, or manuka honey, uh, as they're known for their natural antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory properties. I know that some eye doctors recommend diluted baby shampoo, however, I disagree. There are research publications that show that baby shampoo is associated with negative changes to the eyelid glands and the ocular surface and dedicated eyelid shampoos and eyelid wipes are not only more convenient, but associated with better outcomes. An extra bonus tip I'll add in here is just to ask your eye doctor if there's any signs of demodex mites bothering your eyelashes and eyelids, because these pesky critters, we've done previous videos on it, can be pretty nasty to the eyelids, and starting to treat those eyelashes and lids about four to six weeks before surgery will likely be beneficial. Now we're still just talking about eyelid health here, but the second part is to do warm eyelid compresses. Eyelid compresses is something I've talked about in several other videos in the past, but in general, as long as somebody doesn't have rosacea of the skin, getting heat to the eyelids is considered beneficial and especially good if you're somebody who struggles with dry eye from meibomian gland dysfunction. As heat to the eyelids, uh, as well as this drawing more blood flow to the tissues, also helps melt any solidified oils that are trapped in the meibomian glands. This is recommended to do at least once a day for 10 minutes at a time and starting at least one month out before the surgery date. Perhaps starting even earlier if you are somebody that, to know that you have problems with dry eye symptoms. Now there are many brands and styles of warm compresses to choose from. There are some that you simply heat up in the microwave for 30 seconds, others you plug into like a USB, and then there's even ones that are air activated now. In fact, that's what I used the most often in my own prep for this surgery was using the air activated ones because I was traveling quite a bit and not everywhere you go has something like a microwave. But if you don't have a warm compress of your own already, I will put some links to some of my favorites in the description below for you. Now the second step in this protocol is to optimize the tear film and treat any existing dry eye. This is certainly important for anybody who knows they have dry eye disease, but equally important for those who don't feel like they have dry eye symptoms or know if they have a diagnosis of dry eyes. And this is because the tear film is the first refractive surface of the eye. And so if your tear film is fluctuating, then that can impact the accuracy of all the measurements that are needed to take in order to calculate for any lenses or any procedure to treat the eye in refractive surgery. 
Existing inflammation in the tear film may also contribute to the healing rate of the eye, potentially throwing off and causing fluctuation or blurriness in the vision after the procedure, and even contribute to worsening dry eye symptoms because the surgery and all of the pre-op and post-operative medications in those surgeries can sometimes exacerbate symptoms of dry eye. So yes, this is important. So to optimize the tear film and the ocular surface, one, if you were a contact lens wearer, stop wearing your contact lenses if you can. This is because contact lens wear is known to disrupt the tear film and drive dry eye symptoms. Also, contact lenses have the potential to cause corneal warpage, which can throw off the measurements for these surgeries. It's usually recommended to stay out of contact lenses for at least two weeks if you are a soft contact lens wearer, and even up to eight weeks if you happen to wear a hard contact lens or an RGP, rigid gas permeable lens. Now, because I primarily wore soft contact lenses every day for over 20 years before the surgery, I purposefully switched out and went back to glasses for about six weeks before the surgery just to be on the safe side. The second step for optimizing the tear film is to use preservative-free artificial tears. And I know some people who, whether they have dry eye or not, will say that artificial tears just don't do anything for them. Well, the research says otherwise, especially if done consistently. For pre-op optimization, the research supports that using preservative-free artificial tears three to four times a day for at least one week before surgery. Potentially even better benefits starting three months before surgery if you're somebody that knows you have existing dry eye. As far as which eye drops to use, I do have several other videos that go much more in depth into how to choose those. You can always ask your doctor which one they recommend for you as well. Otherwise, for me personally, as I was getting ready for my own surgery, I mainly stuck to Ivisia eye drops or those from the brand called Optase. I mainly chose to use the Ivisia eye drops because of this publication here, which used ingredients in Theolos Duo eye drops and found benefits for patients who underwent cataract surgery. And here in the US, Theolos Duo is not available, but Ivisia is, and they are nearly equivalent of the same ingredients. Now this video today is not sponsored, but if you do want to save some money on eye drops, on eyelid wipes, or other products that we've mentioned, then I have teamed up with HelpMize.com. There you can find many of these products already bundled and packaged together that are ready to ship out straight to your door. That way not only do you save money, but you save the headache of not having to hunt down all of these individual products at the store. Plus you can save 10% off by using our code DEH10 at checkout. Now, if you have a history of existing dry eye or pre-existing ocular surface disease, then there may be a benefit of treating that dry eye more aggressively before having eye surgery. Now, there are many different treatments for dry eye that go all the way from prescription medications to in-office procedures. But one medical treatment that has been shown in several publications to be helpful in preparation for eye surgery is that of using cyclosporin medications. This is an immunomodulator that helps with reducing aggressive inflammation that's frequently seen in dry eye disease. Unfortunately, some of the older formulations of cyclosporin include names like Restasis, and those are known to not penetrate the ocular tissues super well, often taking three to six months before we see any clinical effect. And so that is why some eye doctors may recommend using newer formulations of cyclosporin, such as Sequa or that of Vivi, as these have been shown to have a faster clinical response, sometimes in just a matter of weeks. That is why in my own preparation for eye surgery, knowing that I have a history of dry eye, I did start taking eye drops of Vivi twice a day for about four to six weeks before having that surgery. But these are not the only eye drops shown to be beneficial in treating dry eye before eye surgery, such as with Lefitograst or brand name Zydra as shown here. Otherwise, other treatments that have published research behind them in being beneficial before eye surgery include that of IPL, or intense pulsed light procedures, also having lipoflow or other forms of thermal pulsation treatments, and even some publications on red light therapy being beneficial before operative procedures. But keep in mind that there are many causes 
of dry eye disease. And not every person responds to the same treatment plan. So it's super important to not just take my word for it, talk to your local eye doctor, see what they think is gonna be best option for you and treating any dry eye that you have. And now the third part of this pre-op routine is all about helping the body heal. This means adjusting some lifestyle factors to help reduce inflammation and promote healing. There's three elements to this. The first part are nutritional supplements that have been shown in the research to be beneficial not only for eye health, but for your tear film, as well as outcomes related to eye surgery. And then the last two are just general tips that are good for overall health and healing that I focused on in preparation for my own surgery. Now I have several videos that go more in depth on eye supplements for general eye health, but specifically for corrective eye surgery or refractive eye surgery, this is what I could find supported in the research. First are those of omega-3 fatty acids. Now there is still some debate in the profession around the utility of omega-3s, specifically for dry eye disease. However, the most recent publications, including meta-analyses, are supportive for the use of omega-3s for dry eye and any sort of dry eye symptoms related to refractive surgical procedures. Taking a triglyceride form of omega-3 fatty acid of around 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams per day of a one-to-one -one ratio of EPA, DHA is generally recommended for ocular health. Probably best taken at least six to eight weeks leading up to surgery if you don't already have a good omega-3 index score. However, I do urge you to have a discussion with your doctor and or eye surgeon first before considering taking high doses of omega-3 fatty acids in case they have any concerns of interactions or other health issues that you may have. Most eye doctors and surgeons that I know usually have no concerns over this, but there still are uh, some rare cases. So again, I always talk to your doctors first. But if you want to learn more about omega-3s and the intricacies of how those are beneficial for the eye, I have a whole video series on that, and I encourage you to check those out. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Now, one additional supplement that I took alongside taking omega-3s was that of Blink Nutritiers. If you haven't heard too much about Blink Nutritiers, just know that it has a little bit of vitamin D and higher quantities of lutein, zeaxanthin, and then some curcumin in it, which has been studied and featured in two recent publications in the last five years that have shown significant benefits for dry eye signs and symptoms and having benefits within just eight weeks. And since carotenoids are lipid soluble, I would take the Blake Nutritiers alongside the omega-3s so that it would improve the bioavailability of them. One other supplement that may be a benefit is something called Hydro Eye. This is a mixture of mostly GLA omega-6, along with a little bit of omega-3 and some other vitamins mixed in. There are publications that support its benefit for tear film and dry eye symptoms, as well as even one publication showing benefit after PRK surgery. The only reason that I didn't use it for myself in preparation for surgeries because I've tried them in the past and haven't really noticed a significant benefit with it. However, I will mention that I know many dry eye specialists who do strongly recommend it and find good results with it. So something I'd like to mention, even though I personally didn't take it because I value what is in the published research and not just my anecdotal experience. Now, my last two tips here are just general tips for good health and healing. First of which is to get good rest right? Our brains, our bodies, and even our eyes need good rest in order to heal and function at their very best. So put a little bit of extra effort in order to get at least seven to nine hours of sleep every night leading up to that surgery. And my final tip is to try to eat a little bit healthier as you prepare to have surgery. This is mainly just cutting out all the ultra processed food, cutting down on extra sugars, and try to eat a variety of of whole fresh foods, including staying well hydrated. I think that getting good sleep and eating healthier can go a long ways. Now I've shared a lot of information in this video and of course, no two eyes are the same and eye surgery can be very personal. So don't just take my word for it. I always encourage you to talk to your local eye doctors and your eye surgeon about what they think is best for you and your eye health. But if you found the information in this video valuable, then please do me a favor and hit that little thumbs up like button down below as that will help more people 
find this video and help us with our mission of helping more people with their eyes and eye health. Also consider subscribing to the channel if you're new here, as soon we'll be coming out with a video on how to optimize the eye health after having an eye surgery, and you won't want to miss that one. Otherwise, let me sign off by saying thank you very much for watching, keep an eye on it, and I hope you have a fantastic day.